Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review, and today we are diving into the world of video games. As we take a look at this, this is the latest release of Master Chief, and he's a part of the Spartan Collection. Um, and this is released by Jazzwares, and this is part of their Halo line of action figures. Uh, more specifically, this represents Master Chief as he appears in the new video game, um, Halo Infinite. So on the right, what we have here, this was the first release of the figure. Um, this figure came out back in 2020. Originally, it was um, to be released to coincide with the, um, the release of the new Halo Infinite video game. But at the time when Microsoft revealed the early videos of the game, um, it received a lot of criticism from the fans. A lot of fans felt that the game um, didn't look like it was going to be like, you know, next level. You know, the graphics were very subpar. It didn't feel like a next generation console game. So Microsoft kind of like, you know, they kind of pulled back on the game a little and they, they delayed it for many months. But at the same time, that didn't stop the release of the action figures. So, you know, even though the figures came out, the video game was delayed. So I think for like, you know, well over a year maybe, um, you know, we've, we've been getting Halo action figures even though the game was kind of pushed back. But it's December 18th, 2021, and the game came out a few weeks ago. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to at least take a look at the, um, the latest release of the Master Chief figure. And kind of like, not necessarily do a, a, a complete side-by-side -side comparison, but I thought it'd be fun just to have the original release on hand, um, you know, so we could slightly compare them. So this was the original release of Master Chief back in 2020. As I stated earlier, he was supposed to be released when the new Halo Infinite game came out, but that game was delayed. Um, and as a bonus for this game, I mean, as a bonus uh, with this action figure, you got like some, I think, some DLC content. So there was a game add-on here, and on, if you look underneath, you could kind of see it there. There's the card with the download code. Um, I'm not sure what it was. I'm not sure if it was like, if you got like this free armor or maybe like um, some sort of weapon or like a skin or something. So yeah, for me at the time, I was excited when these action figures came out. I was disappointed that the game was delayed. Um, I'm I'm a gamer, so you know, anytime there's a new Halo game, I'm kind of excited. And uh, I remember I was seeing these at Target uh, on my way home after work, and then I was kind of I was kind of stoked on seeing them. But with the game being delayed, it was just kind of weird. It's kind of bittersweet because you know, on one hand, I got new toys, but on the other hand, <laughs> the game was delayed. And for me, that was part of the reason why I, I like jumped on board and got an Xbox Series S because you know I, I wanted to kind of experience that next generation um, level of gaming. And for me, Halo is kind of like synonymous with that. You know, every time there's a you know a new Xbox release, there's always some sort of Halo game on the horizon. Um, I have fond memories of playing the first Halo. Halo Two, I remember that being such a big event. Um, you know, there was so much merchandise involved with that. There were hero clicks. There were action figures. And it's it kind of cool. They took the Halo, like, um, ball and the, the marketing machine kind of just kept on rolling with it. And it's kept on getting bigger and bigger. And we we have gotten Halo action figures, you know, throughout the years. Uh, back in the day, McFarlane Toys produced a line of Halo action figures. Before them, there was a company, I think it was called Joyride. And they produced a line of, I think they were like 7-inch Halo figures. But in this day and age, in 2020, 2021, Jazzware is uh, on the scene and they're giving us some great action figures for Halo. And this guy here was from the first wave. Um, and as you can see here, he looks beautiful. The package design is really cool. They take you know a page out of the you know the, the the art aesthetic from the video game. So it comes kind of like in this kind of like dark. Um, drab brown with like a very dark olive green uh, with kind of like muted gold highlights in the back. So they kind of take that halo color aesthetic and apply it to the package design, which I think is really neat. Um, you know, you have Master Chief nicely framed in the window and you kind of have his loadout. He has his pistol, his rifle, multiple hands. So you have options here in terms of how you want to pose them. 
Um, like I mentioned, he comes with a trading card, which is actually the downloadable code. So I'm not sure if that's for like maybe a reskin or a an additional weapon. And on the back, um, here we have Master Chief. He comes with his assault rifle, um, his sidekick, and additional hands. And then here was some of the characters in the first wave. Uh, there was Cat, uh, Spartan MK7, Spartan MK5. And back in the day, uh, like up until maybe like Halo ODST, I was kind of... Not that I was super well versed, but I was able to like you know recognize different Halo armors and you know know their models and numerical de designations and stuff stuff like that. But as the universe kept on getting bigger and bigger, it was just a lot of information to absorb. <laughs> so for me, it's kind of like I dig seeing the different armors, but at the same time, I kind of forget which which each one is. It's almost like stormtroopers. You know, there's so many different classifications of stormtroopers. But for Halo, I think it's great. It's wonderful. You know, there's there's a lot of life beyond the Master Chief character. You know, as you've seen throughout the mythos in the video games. So it's it's really cool that they're giving you all these different characters and different armors. Um, I'm really hoping that at some point in time, they start going beyond just the Spartan armors and you know these characters, and maybe start branching off and giving us some like you know some of the more um, unique looking characters, like you know like officers and some of the more uh, iconic alien characters because you know the covenant and um there's so many different crazy guys i'd, I'd love to see in this larger scale like ar like i'd love to see an arbiter if they haven't made one yet um in this scale because i mean for the mcfarland toys you know i used to buy a handful of those every now and then and i used to love those i, l I have a giant collection of the hero clicks minis and there's just something visually about halo that's always um, pulled me in so over here on our left, we have the, the latest release of Master Chief. And this one came with the grapple shot. It's kind of like his primary way of like jumping around the levels, if you've seen the game. It's almost kind of like very Bionic Commando. Um, I want to say Lost Planet had a character. I think one of the accessories might have been a similar grapple shot kind of deal. Um, again, multiple hands, his rifle. And this one actually features a different color scheme. It's a little bit more battle damaged. And on the back, let's compare the backs while we're at it. Uh, Master Chief, um, he comes with his VK-78 command rifle, his grapple shot, and additional hands. And this is Series 3 that features Spart Spartan MK-5, Spartan Palmer, and Noble 6. Um, I want to say, I believe Palmer it might have a removable helmet, I think. So yeah, so we're going to focus more so on this one. So uh, this is the figure we're going to unbox. Uh, the first release figure, I'm just going to keep this mint, uh, mint on, eh, I'm just going to keep this mint on card for now because, I don't know. Alright, let's get to it. All right, so first impressions of Master Chief while he's still in the tray. Um, really, really impressed. Uh, what really grabs me is the paint application. Um, it's really well done. There's a lot of detail, a lot of battle scarring, a lot of worn metal. Um, it looks beautiful. You know, as opposed to this one, this is a much cleaner figure. Um, there's some slight wear on him. Um, like, you can kind of see some silver and some like scratches along his armor and some of the in the edges of his armor plating are kind of scratched off revealing some metal underneath and over here you can kind of see some battle scarring on his chest but this one looks like he went through the ringer it's really beat up um you know i, I could appreciate that look it's almost kind of like in star wars like if you're a fan of the old um clone wars cartoon like the clone troopers that were kind of like fresh off the factory line, they always kind of joked around and called them shinies because their armor was like completely shiny white because they haven't um, seen battle yet. 
So for me, this is kind of cool. This is kind of like um, uh, Master Chief when he reaches planet fall. You know what I mean? He just hits the ground running. He, you know, this is at the beginning of the campaign. And then this is, is what he looks like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like 48 hours into like running around the, um, the world. just like blowing the crap out of everything. So I'm really excited about this. Um, let's take him out. All right, so um, some of the details here might be hard to see because, as you can see, the uh, my light's kind of um, reflecting off of this really brightly, especially along his chest. But if I could bring this into focus a little, we could get a look at what I was talking about. So right here, you can kind of see like the wear and tear, like the battle scarring and the scratches. Uh, likewise, on his armor, there's, there's like heavy burn marks. We're on here, the armor is predominantly still kind of green. It has the scratches, but it's missing the burn marks. One thing I've noticed in terms of the paint application, um, this guy's armor under his chest, the green armor carries down a little bit further. Whereas on this one, um, it's more black in certain areas. But these appear to be identical sculpts. So I believe the molds are um, identical. The only thing that you're seeing different is the paint application. So yeah, the battle armor look looks really nice on this guy. And for me, I think that's how I prefer my Master Chief. I don't prefer my Master Chief in like completely clean armor. Um, you know, he's kind of like the hero who always saves the galaxy. And he's very tried and true in terms of his character. Um, very heroic, um, very selfless. And for me, I like to imagine him looking like this. You know, he's, he's gone through the ringer. He's gone to hell and back. And... I, the, the, the paint application on this is just simply amazing. You know, look at all the burn marks, the edge highlighting, the, the, like, you know, re revealing the chipped paint with the silver. It looks great. A lot of fine micro scratches. Yeah, so this is, I mean, whether or not um, you're a fan of the video game, but just like action figures, I think this is something that's worth dipping into. Uh, for me, this could be very much uh, be considered like one of the definitive... Um, versions in terms of Master Chief and action figure form. Um, we've gotten so many figures of them over the years, but this one, this one really takes the cake. This one's amazing, especially at this price point. Um, the Jazzwares Halo line, it's very affordable. You know, it's on par with like you know Marvel Legends and stuff like that. So if if you you know if you want to branch off in terms of your six and six inch and seven inch scale action figures and try something different, I think the the Jazzware Halo figures they do not disappoint at all. Um, as you can see here, the sculpting is really is really tight. It's really clean. A lot of hard angles, especially for a figure that's covered in armor. The sculpting is not soft at all, so you get you really get all the the nice hard details sculpted in. Um, in terms of his articulation, his head rotates. Um, in terms of looking down, um, not so much. In terms of looking up, um, we're getting about there. Um, he has a a cut mid torso below his chest line and it allows for some tilting movement um, not so much a swivel as you can see it's very limited in terms of arching back not a whole lot not a whole lot of ab crunch either but that's mostly because there's this armor plating here that kind of hinders the movement um, he does have waist articulation I th it's kind of tight um, Yeah, it's it's it it it's it is cut there, but because of the belt, it doesn't really want to move. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, unless it's just unless I'm just being stubborn with it. Whoops. Okay, so <laughs> all right, so here's a here's a sneak peek at what's going on on the inside of Master Chief. If you're curious, um. Like I stated, he is separated at the chest right here and the abdomen. There's a ball joint and a socket. So even though the articulation is there, it's much like I say for any action figure, the range of, mo the range of motion is very limited. 
And that's because of the nature of how the armor is sculpted. So, you know, even though it's there, you're not getting a whole lot of motion, which is disappointing. But at the same time, he's a guy in, a, in bulky armor. Um, in terms of leg articulation, he could kick up about there. He could kick out. But then again, you're hitting um, the armor piece again. So the range of motion is, once again, a little bit limited. There is no thigh cut, so there's no thigh swivel. Double jointed knees, two pins. Um, ankle articulation is toes articulated, which is nice. In terms of his arms, um, they can rotate, they can go out. Uh, again, um, his armor pieces are like colliding with each other. Bicep swivel, uh, double pinned elbows, and wrist articulation. He has wrist swivel, and it slightly tilts in. So there. So as we see here, he has multiple hand options. You have fists, blade out hands. Um, he has his rifle here, and he has his grapple shot. Uh, let's get the grapple shot out at least. So the grapple shot, this is kind of like um, one of his new accessories in the video game. It's kind of his way of traversing through the world. But at the same time, it also allows him to like um, experiment with like new combat attacks. Like you know, if you could pull your enemies in at melee range, or you know, hurl yourself towards them. Um, and it's just a simple. It's, it's that kind of toy string that you always kind of expect. And it's it's a neat play feature. Um, you know, if I was a kid, I'd love this. The collector in me though, kind of wishes that. You know, they provided another version of this, like maybe one that was, um, like, you know, it, it, it's completely plastic. You don't ha you kind of lose this cloth string, but instead you have a plastic uh, string that, it's not, it's not functional. You know what I mean? It looks more like for display. Um, I'm trying to see. Let, 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 just give me a second. Let me grab something real quick. All right, I don't have it. What I was trying to find is there was like a McFarlane Batgirl figure that came out recently, or um, maybe the first release of the Batgirl figure, and she had her grapple gun, and then it had it didn't have an actual like string and grapple hook. Instead, they kind of just molded a plastic string that was always going to be straight, and it kind of had that effect like it was uncurling. For me, as a collector who likes to display figures, it'd be nice if we had that option as opposed to like a real actual functional toy like i think this is a great feature if you're a kid and you love and you want to play with your action figures but i think if you're like a collector and you want to display it i think it would have been nice if we had an option where the string was this not real and it was this like plastic and it was sculpted and static and it kind of had that effect where it looks like it's unfurling and being like shot out of the the grapple shot like that if that makes any sense but it's a cool feature nonetheless it's cool that you have it um you know you just clasp it around his forearm because as the clasps here yeah it's it's a great accessory um fun little option uh, moving back to the figure let's get his gun out all right his <laughs> okay i'm trying to find the right hand i want to use because to be honest, these hands are kind of stiff, and they, there's not a whole lot of give in terms of um, the mobility of the thumb. It's, it's, the plastic's kind of dense. So let's just swap out hands real quick. Ow. Very tight fit. Um, there we go. So even though this isn't necessarily his trigger hand, this is kind of more so his, his fingers for like, you know, giving orders. I just wanted to use this as an example so you could get an idea of the scale of the weapon on him. 
Uh, and speaking of scale, let's get a quick measurement of this guy. Uh, this guy comes in at about seven and a quarter inches. So it's a you know slightly taller figure than a Marvel Legends. But that's to be expected. Um, you know, in the fiction, Master Chief, I believe he's described as being seven feet tall. Because he's in the Spartan armor. So yeah, great figure. Um, really impressed. Uh, really stoked that the lines, um, you know, been moving on and we're, you know, consistently getting new figures in each in each wave. Uh, but like I said, um, I would love to get you know aliens in the larger scale. Like we do get the aliens and like you know the Covenant and the Banished and stuff. But they're like for the the smaller scaled figures, which I believe are maybe like five inches, and that's the line that comes with like the different vehicles. You know, like there's the Warthog and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, the, these larger figures, they're great. You know, if you're into like G.I. Joe classified series, um, I think this is something you should consider getting just or consider getting just because, you know, the accessories um, and I don't know, the, the details great. The quality is nice. You know, one of the things I am disappointed in is the, the range of motion. Like even though it has the articulation, the range of motion is very disappointing. Um, you know, like I showed you earlier, like you know, even though he has articulated uh, chest and I believe even waist maybe, the nature of the way it's sculpted in the armor doesn't really allow for a whole lot of range of motion. So it's not like he can actually twist at a 90 degrees. You know, you're just kind of just stuck like this. So that's kind of disappointing. But it's a great figure overall, especially if it's just standing there statically. Um, it's a great display piece. If I had to rate this guy numerically, um, you know, to be fair... I want to say, visually, he he's a 9. You know, when I look at this guy, it's a 9. It's Master Chief. All the details are there in the armor. It's sculpted. It's well done. The paint application superb. But then as soon as you start handling it is where all the faults start appearing. You know, um, the, the limits of his articulation, you know, that kind of rears its ugly head. And then you kind of realize that even though it's articulated, it's not as mobile as you'd want it to be. You know, he it's... The armor pieces are constantly colliding with each other, which limits and hinders his, um, you know, his posability. But for the most part, it's an excellent figure. I think it's a, it's a great deal at the price point. So yeah, it's a great, awesome, cool thing. And since we're on the subject of Master Chief and Halo, let's take a look at some other Halo action figures. Alright, so I believe this might um, be the first release of one of the larger Halo action figures, I think. Um, uh, this was a series produced by, I want to say the company was called Joyride. I believe that's what the company was called. These figures kind of came out um, on the coattails of Halo 2. So here was the initial release. Here was Master Chief. And Joyride is a weird company. They made a lot of video game action figures. But it wasn't necessarily dedicated to this like one specific video game. Um, you know, they made they made uh, Master Chief. For some reason, I want to say I think they made a crazy taxi action figure. And they do weird things. They'd make like I think action figures of like some of the characters from Game Pro magazine. Um, so this was a long time ago. I remember buying this figure. I think at Electronics Boutique before it became EB Games. And if you're unfamiliar with those stores, that was the predecessor to what's known as GameStop now. So this was a great action figure. And I remember when I got it, it what really uh, pulled me in was the size of this action figure. Um, you know, I think this came out maybe around the time when, Mar when Marvel Legends first came out. And those were, you know, about six inch action figures. Whereas this guy was ginormous next to a Marvel Legends. Like if this guy is, you know, seven and a quarter, this guy's easily maybe eight inches. Let me grab a ruler real quick. Yeah, so this guy's about eight inches tall. So you're looking at a considerably larger figure. And, uh, you know, if this was, this came out probably back in, uh, um, I can't see the date. Early to, I'm, I mean, early 2000s, I'm guessing, or mid 2000s i can't remember 
But for its time, I thought this is a great figure. Um, Articulation-wise, his head rotates, arm rotates, it goes out. Um, this guy has much more of a waist swivel, and he has an articulated chest also. So it's surprising. You know, this is a much newer figure produced, you know, the last year and a half. This guy is much older, and this guy dates back to, like, Halo 2. So, um, you know, the fact that he could, like, crunch forward a little bit more so and have more articulation is very surprising for an older figure. Um, his legs could kick up. Um, I believe they could kick out also, but not a whole lot. Um, single, no, he has just single or double jointed. Oh, double jointed knees, um, ankle articulation, but it's, it's, a, it's a fine figure. I think it's, I think it's aged okay. Um, it's, it's, the details are still nice. The, it's very still true to the Halo 2 armor. And it was kind of cool because Joyride... They really milked this mold for what it's worth, so they released constantly um, different paint variations, especially since multiplayer was such, it, it, and it still is, multiplayer is such a big deal in Halo. And um, back with Halo 2 especially, um, and they, they really capitalized off of that by giving us, you know, the Spartan armor and all these different colors. So even though some of these weren't necessarily true to the, the core campaign, you know, if you played multiplayer, It'd be, it was easy and fun to like you know find a figure that looked kind of close to what you're using in multiplayer and buy that. So it was kind of neat that you got different you know paint variations of the Spartan armor. And since we're on the subject of Spartan armor, this is a very unique Halo action figure. I forgot the company that made it, and this is an action figure you had to actually assemble so it's what makes this figure really really unique is that all the joints and limbs are held in place with magnets and this company even experimented with making like um, some Iron Man toys because I do have I think a war machine that's like this so you'd buy these toys and you'd assemble it and it kind of they came with um, let me just all right, there we go. I still want to break it. So this toy, you'd build up the endoskeleton. And as you can see here, um, all these joints here have mag have like magnet plates or these little magnetic balls in place. So then you just take this and then assemble the armor on the outside. This was This was a really cool gimmick. I love this toy a lot. And then, uh, let me see if we can take the helmet off. Yeah, you could kind of remove the helmet. If you look underneath there, it's kind of like a, there's a, there's kind of a head underneath this helmet, but it doesn't want to come off right now. But so this is magnetic, magnetic socket, and then it's a ball joint. And it's a good, it's a good tight fit. It doesn't come off that easy. So it's fun. I mean, if you're into like, if you're into like building Legos or mega constructs, this was kind of a cool thing because you got to build up your own Spartan armor. You know, you take the endoskeleton, slap on all the plastic pieces, and it's all held in place with magnets. Really cool toy. Very fun to play with. And I kind of wish this company was still around making these. And with it being magnets, you know, there's a lot of posability. And it's just really cool. And it collapses easy also because of the, <laughs> because of the magnets. But yeah, it's a very novel kind of um, action figure. Very different. All right, so let's wrap this video up. It's running kind of long. Um, I feel like I've been speaking at a million miles an hour. I have like places to be today, so I kind of wanted to get this review in. But at the same time, I kind of just want to just talk about Master Chief. All right, so do you need this figure? Um, if you're a fan of Halo and you're a fan of action figures, I'm gonna say yes. At the very least, just buy a Master Chief, you know, and display it next to your Xbox or whatever. You know, he's an iconic character. I kind of feel that in the world of like science fiction and armored video game or science fiction characters, I think this guy's status is kind of like on the same level of, as like something like Boba Fett. You know, he's very, there's like a certain anonymity about the character with him and his helmet. And, um, 
yeah, he's he's a very iconic hero in the world of video games and the world of fiction, especially with the new um, Halo series coming out soon. I think that's going to be on Paramount Plus, I believe. Okay, so wrapping this up, once again, my name is Lou. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your continued likes, comments, and support. I greatly appreciate it. So, until the next video, um, be safe, take care of yourself, and most importantly, be happy. Alright, I'll talk to you later.